Hey, it's Mike here, and today, is Oatly the new Coke? Is oat milk literally equivalent to your classic high fructose corn syrup, Coca-Cola soda? Well, that's what this blog slash article on the self-publishing platform Substack says, which uh, several of you sent me to respond to, so I'm gonna do it. The main claim against Oatly here is that there is a high glycemic index and therefore glycemic load of Oatly, which is directly comparable to Coca-Cola. They also criticize the oil content, saying it's basically the same as French fries. So we're gonna tackle all that. And I'm also, just for fun, not for scientific purposes, gonna do some blood tests comparing what happens in my bloodstream after an Oatly drink and after Coca-Cola. So that'll be fun. And no, it was not just an excuse for me to drink Coca-Cola. I did not enjoy the experience of me drinking Coca-Cola. Anyway, let's go. So for those who have been living under a cow, Oatly has been a major vegan milk sensation. Bieber loves it. It's in Starbucks. Everybody says it's delicious. And I would say shockingly delicious because no one would expect that perhaps the most creamy, yummy milk would come from oats. You know, not everybody's gonna have it as their favorite milk, but still, I think it's up there. And I would also add that it is a Swedish company that is very badass. They had the uh, the ad campaign, milk, but it's made for humans, which they were forced to take down in Sweden after being sued by the dairy industry. And I think it might've stayed up in the UK, but uh, they've moved on from it, I think. <laughs> so the article that you guys sent me was written by an SEO guy named Nat Eliasson, and it becomes pretty quickly apparent that he took the major ideas about O sugar content from a previous blog article. And that was written by Jeff Nobbs. As you can see, he did some graphics directly comparing Coke to Oatly and French fries to Oatly. So interesting stuff. And I will say the Substack article credits him and links to him, but we're gonna be kind of addressing both articles at the same time. They're basically the same article, except for the newer Substack one, focusing more on general sugar industry history and ties and parallels and everything. And there's definitely just general anti-carb undertones. No one is saying that refined sugar is a health food here, but to those people who would take articles like this and go down a low carb path, it's just worth mentioning from this pretty recent 2019 meta-analysis. I looked at high versus low carb consumption and the people with the lower carb consumption have had 32% increased risk of mortality and 50% increased risk of heart attack and stroke mortality. So going down that path from articles like this, is just, just a little bit of an oopsie. And yes, I'll probably try and tie that into like half of my videos from now on. Anyway, to Oatly and the basics of Oatly as an oat milk, there's something suspicious going on when you try to make oat milk at home and it tastes like nasty oat water, but then you get some Oatly and it's this magic, creamy, lightly sweet drink that is super amazing and refreshing. Well, it turns out that they use a unique process. They use enzymes to partially digest it. And this is where the sugar topic comes in. So it turns out they were initially labeling it as no added sugar, which is technically correct. They are not adding any sugar to this, but due to US law, it turns out they have to add seven grams of added sugar to their packaging because that sugar is created during the manufacturing process. The claim of these blogs is that the sugar that is created in this process is high glycemic, and therefore this is comparable to Coke. We're about to do a glycemic load calculation, but before that, it's just worth mentioning that there are several different types of Oatly. You have the barista kind, you have the sort of original drink kind, and you have the low fat one, and there's also a chocolate one. But in terms of those three most common ones, it's really mainly a variation in the amount of fat that is put in through canola oil. And of course the low fat one has no oil and all of them have seven grams of added sugars written on the back, even though again, there is no actual sugar added. There's no like added table sugar, cane sugar, high fructose corn syrup, nothing on the ingredients because there isn't any of that in there. So when tracing back the glycemic claims, we can see on Jeff Nob's blog that he did a glycemic low calculation comparing 12 ounces of Oatly to 12 ounces of Coke. Well, first of all, it's worth mentioning that the official serving size of Oatly and milk in general is usually eight ounces. And for Coke, it is 12 ounces. So the servings are different. I'm still interested in comparing substance versus substance, but that's the first issue here. All right, so the glycemic load for Oatly is a little bit complicated because not only do you have to find the average glycemic index per gram, taking into account the maltose and the starch carbohydrates, which I just approximated to be the same as oats in terms of glycemic index. And then something that I believe that was not done in the equations in Jeff Knob's article was that he did not subtract fiber. So you're supposed to subtract fiber grams. Okay, here's the equation for glycemic load. Glycemic load equals 
glycemic index times grams of carbohydrate per the portion you're looking at minus grams of fiber then divided by 100. Sounds kind of complicated, but we have 105 as the glycemic index for maltose times the seven grams of it in there. And then we have 59 as the glycemic index for the remaining starch times six. There was nine other grams of carbohydrates, but three grams of fiber. So we're left with six, divide that by 100. And the result is roughly 11. And then for Coke, it's simple. It's just 70 times 25 divided by 100, which is 17.5, which is 60% higher. Very notable. Then a 12 ounce serving of Coke, which is what a serving of Coke is, is 27. We're talking about two and a half times higher on a serving per serving basis. So no, I do not think that the glycemic load makes it the new Coke. I would also add that the glycemic load of Coke is probably lower than its negative impact on your health because they're using high fructose actually lowers the glycemic load even though that high refined fructose is associated with non-alcoholic fatty liver, which is not gonna be happening with Oatly. Okay, now let's go to the Oatly versus Coca-Cola experiment, which once again, I'm just gonna say, did not turn out as rigorous as it could be even just for one person, which is not rigorous. Anyway, here I am. All right, here I am about to go get some Oatly. I've got my blood sugar testing kit and all my extra little lances, ready to stab myself a bunch of times again. All right, here I am at the grocery store, ready to buy Coke for the first time in forever. I don't even know where, is there like a soda section? We'll see if we can find it. Okay, so they don't have the original type or the barista type, but that's fine because they all have that seven grams, so. Where's the Coke? I only see Pepsi. Finally found it. This is really weird that I'm about to buy this after literally decades. High fructose corn syrup. That's what we're looking for right there. Ready to go. So here's how the tests were planned. First day I did two Oatly tests, eight and 12 ounces. And the second day was Coke tests, eight and 12 ounces. I tried to keep everything mirrored between the two days. I made sure I started at fasting levels under 100. Then every 15 minutes I measured for about one and a half hours. And that's because blood sugar charts of Coke that I looked at seemed to go back down after about an hour. However, on my eight ounce Oatly test, I went down to fasting for two readings. So I just stopped. I wish I didn't, but I was starving. <laughs> Still good, still creamy, without the added oil. Love it. And in terms of a taste test, Oatly is interesting in terms of the sort of taste profile. And I think there's something about it that makes it a little bit more similar to cow's milk without the gross, because I hated drinking cow's milk. And with Oatly, you have a couple seconds in, you have sort of this undertone of creamy flavor that is part of the palette of drinking cow's milk. But then for me, there was this kind of like, I almost want to say like a rottenly weird mammalian, <laughs> mammalian flavor that comes through in cow's milk. Yeah, that's what I just said. So that was really easy. Good job, Oatly, for making something delicious. All right, guys, here's my 12 ounces of Coke in my pretty actually large Breville juicer <laughs> container. Oh my gosh, uh, this is gross. All right, we're playing blood sugar bingo. I don't know what's gonna happen. I had to swish my mouth out because <clears throat> there's a weird frictioniness on my teeth that I haven't felt in a very long time. Is that the uh, acid weakening the enamel on my teeth? Who knows? But uh, I swished it out, so hopefully I don't get a cavity instantly. Okay, so here's my relatively cheap blood sugar monitor I got from the local pharmacy. Okay, so I just pricked myself, filled the strip, five, four, three, two, one, and... 160, Ooh, I'm not telling you what that result is. <clears throat> my blood sugar is so high right now. My tummy feels a little bit weird. You guys, I'm literally on Coke right now. Okay, so are you guys ready for the results? The eight ounce versus eight ounce was pretty interesting. So at first I was like, oh, I'll just measure until it goes down under 100 and then I'll just make sure it stays under 100. And so that's why I have less data points for one than the other, but you can see the Oatly hardly went up at all and then went down under 100 pretty quickly. And an interesting thing happened with the eight ounces of Coke, and that, that is that it had a reasonable initial spike, went down, but then went up even higher than the first spike. So we're looking at, you know, considerably elevated, not insanely, but considerably elevated for a much longer period of time. So we're having higher blood sugar for longer periods of time with the Coke. And here is the 12 ounce comparison. And it's really interesting that I did get quite a bit of a spike. Remember, I chugged that in, you know, like 20 seconds. So it's not a surprise that we do see 
a reasonable spike with that much Oatly that fast, but then it just goes down and disappears. However, that Coke, again, boom, stays up, you know, hits with 170 something, stays at 160. And uh, it's not to say that nothing's happening with the Oatly. It absolutely is a bike, but I wonder if I drank Oatly in a normal way, like a normal human being, uh, if it would have created as much of a spike. Either way, I don't see anything concerning about the eight ounce normal serving size. But then the Coke is the amount that people are drinking. So that is the main point here. And let me know if you think of any interesting comparisons that I could do in the future a little bit more rigorously, like maybe over a week. Uh, compare two foods and see what we get. That's because I am down to test on myself and prick myself in the name of science. That's actually why Sean Baker called me prick the vegan. <laughs> And another point about sugar is it's very clear that vegans tend to eat more carbohydrates on average by about 10% than the normal population. And yet, if you look to the Adventist studies, for example, they have, you know, 78% lower total risk of diabetes, which really is the fear here. So what Oatly is, isn't anything that vegans haven't been eating for a while, yet we do not see these increased risks of diabetes. And again, low carb people who are afraid of carbs like this, 32% increased risk of mortality. That's not to say that refined sugars are health foods and it would be really interesting to see a real study on the glycemic impact of Oatly, but right now it does not appear to be dangerous. And I will say there's there's some validity to saying, okay, there's a glycemic load of Oatly and there are glycemic loads of a lot of foods like whole carbs that can appear to be high, but they're associated with lower mortality, whole grains and things like legumes lower mortality. And then I just have to mention again that the main use of Oatly is usually a little bit in some type of drink at a coffee shop. People are not guzzling this stuff down. And I'll get into the negative effects of cow's milk really briefly in a second. But first, let's go to the other claim of the issue with Oatly and that is its high oil content. And first of all, you know that if you wanna get Oatly without oil, you can. That low fat Oatly has no oil. So that's worth mentioning. And you know that I do not view oil as a health food, but even here things get a little ridiculous to that article that you guys sent me, quote, the evidence for the harms of canola oil is still in its early days, but continues to grow. Research is linked to memory impairment, Alzheimer's risk, cardiovascular disease, diabetes, increased all-cause mortality, metabolic syndrome, decreased brain function, and oxidative stress. As somebody who's known for being, let's just say, cautious of oil, this even appears overboard. And I happened to stumble across a comment, which I then checked and was true. If you look through this, it's mostly rat studies. We're talking rat and rat, and actually one's about cooking and canola oil, which is different. And then three more of those are rat studies. And you know, I don't need to defend it too much, but I wanna get a level head here. First of all, is it like French fries in this situation? No, because there are things that happen when you fry oils. This is not a fried oil. In addition to that, Canola oil has a reasonable amount of omega-3s, which are generally health promoting. You know, it ties for the lowest saturated fat content of pretty much any oil commonly eaten. And from this, you know, somewhat older study, if we want to compare it to milk fat, we're talking about 25% lower LDL or bad cholesterol in the canola oil treatment. And something they also criticize canola oil for, and I have in the past, is the potential for there being trans fats in there. Trans fats are very unhealthy, but as Oatly has said themselves, there is less than 0.1 grams of trans fat in 100 grams of the canola oil that they use. So it, it appears that trans fat's not an issue here. Yet we need to remind people that it naturally occurs in animal products. I believe it's 0.3 grams of trans fats per cup of cow's milk. So based off what I've talked about, about the maltose in there and the oil, obviously Oatly is not broccoli but it's also not as unhealthy as they're making it out to be. So there's somewhere in the middle. Let's just have a little bit of moderate views here. <laughs> and what makes Oatly seem very healthy by comparison, again, going to those negatives of cow's milk. First of all, Oatly is not going to lower your testosterone and increase certain types of estrogen as this trial found with cow's milk. Cow's milk is also higher in saturated fat when Oatly is very low in saturated fat. Let's not forget that cow's milk boosts IGF-1, which is is what fuels every stage of cancer growth. We do not want that high in our systems. And also that there is that 25 milligrams of cholesterol per serving of cow's milk, which is not huge compared to eggs, but it's definitely notable. You don't need to worry about any of those things in Oatly, but what you do need to worry about with cow's milk Moving forward is the environmental effects. Oat milk just kicks butt in this area. Looking to this BBC chart, which was made from a paper that I'll link below, it's very clear that 
Oat milk ties soy milk for being the most environmentally friendly in terms of emissions, land use, and water use. It's great. And for a final point here, it's great to talk about the effects of oatly and cow's milk on your body, but what about the effects of cow's milk, of not choosing oatly or other plant milks on cows? No, they're forcibly impregnated. That needs to happen for them to continue making cow's milk, which is obviously meant for their calf. And because 50% of those calves don't have a place in the dairy industry because they're male, they end up having very bad things happen to them. And of course, after a few years, these dairy cows are spent and have very bad things happen to them as well. So if you choose to drink Oli instead, you have none of that on your conscience and you'll just feel way better, trust me. So in conclusion, these sugar concerns for Oatly are definitely overblown. It's not that there are absolutely no concerns, especially for people with diabetes, but looking to a serving per serving comparison of these two foods, Coca-Cola appears to have nearly three times the glycemic load, yet we're trying to say they're equivalent. That is ridiculous. As for my blood sugar experiments, you can take the results as you want. I really don't think they're meaningful. I would maybe like to extend it. However, I just don't want to drink more Coke. I want to drink more Oatly. I don't want to drink more Coca-Cola. Honestly, I don't really care though, because it's clear that Coca-Cola is just so much less healthy for you. The glycemic load is way higher. And let's think about what might happen to the US if they start adopting Oatly consumption. I mean, First of all, we have big gulps in the US, people just slamming down not eight ounces, not 12 ounces, but kind of like 36 ounces of these sodas at a time. No one is doing that with Oatly. I don't think anybody will do that with, okay, maybe there's one dude out there who's gonna try and do that with Oatly. But in general, we're not gonna see that problem with Oatly. It's gonna be a little bit in coffee here and here and cereal, and maybe people are gonna be drinking some glasses. And, and you know their canola oil scares were just not very effective or meaningful because me, who's generally very oil cautious, was not swayed by them at all. You know, there's only five grams of fat in the standard drinking Oatly, and there's only one gram of fat in the low fat. I mean, if you're oil free, you can drink Oatly. So add all those things together with the environmental impact, the negative impacts on health for dairy, that is the alternative that, you know, I don't know if these authors would like people to drink instead, but I feel like a lot of people are pushing to drink instead of Oatly. And then also the effect on animals, all those things come together to create a really good picture that Oatly is doing great things. So good job, Oatly. And let me know what you guys think about this down below. Feel free to like and subscribe as usual and hit that notification bell because it's easy to miss. You know, you try to hit it with your finger and you just miss it, you know. I believe in you. You can hit it. <laughs> All right. Bye.